Amen. Good morning again. Good morning. Praise God. It's good to be in church, isn't it? it is. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're, you're, you're blessed that you didn't go to the beach. <laughs> I bet you were tempted, <laughs> especially when you look at the forecast and they're giving rain for three o'clock. <laughs> but anyway, John Nulty has been praying for rain, so John's prayers always gets answered eventually. <laughs> Amen. Let's just pray as we turn to God's word. Eh? Father, we just thank you for the power of your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've... You've given us your word, Lord, as, and it brings uh, the entrance of your word gives light. And we thank you for it today, Lord. We thank you for coming, Lord, and just causing your word to come alive in our hearts, Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray today there'll be ream a word will come alive in our hearts, Father, that your word will make a difference. In Jesus' name, I ask for the help of your Holy Spirit now, Lord, just to highlight that which would be on your heart concerning what... I have on my notes or concerning what I have in my heart. We just welcome you, Holy Spirit, to cause the word just to stick in people's hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. So the last couple of weeks I've been sharing, we've been talking about uh, the power of the spoken word. Uh, coming from, um, we started from Proverbs eighteen twenty one. It says, debt and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it will eat its fruit. And the whole, we spoke for a couple of weeks of the whole importance of speaking life and not speaking debt. James chapter three, we went through that. And you know, give the, give the analogy of the horse and the ship and the fire, how you know the horse is steered by a little small bit, and how a massive ship can be turned by a little small rudder. And how great forest fire can be started with a little, small, little flame. And how our tongue is so set among our members that it sets on fire the course of nature. That we can actually have a, have a, have a part to play in our lives and by the words that we speak. And we talked about the power that we can do even to change circumstances. By the spoken word, Mark eleven twenty two and twenty three. We explained the last day when it says "have faith in God." A more accurate translation it says "have the faith of God." And in other words, Jesus was after speaking to the fig tree, and he was after cursing it. So he was really teaching Peter and the disciples a lesson. That listen, there's power in your words. That I'm going to do something here today, that you're going to be able to do after I'm gone. And he spoke to a fig tree, and he cursed it. And Peter said to him the next day, Lord, look at the fig tree that you spoke to. It's withered up from the roots. So Jesus was teaching him, giving him a visual lesson of the power of words. And we see then in the book of Acts, Peter practicing it with John. You know, he probably said to John, come on, look, John, I'm going to show you. Remember, Jesus taught us about the power of words. Let's do it. This man is begging at the temple. And he just fixed his eyes on him and said, silver and gold have I not, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So the power of the word then, uh, the power of God was released through the spoken word. And Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus, he'd already talked to the father. He had four days getting to that tomb. He'd already talked to the father about Lazarus. He said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you, you've heard me. And I thank you that you always hear me. But nothing happened to Lazarus until Jesus spoke the word. Yeah. Lazarus, if Jesus had to stand in at the tomb and just said, right, I thank you, Father, that you've heard me, would Lazarus have come forth? <clears throat> Lazarus came forth when Jesus spoke out and called him forth. So I'm encouraging that when we pray and we talk to God about our problems, and we talk to God about circumstances in our life, how then we can pause and we can wait and see, now what's God telling me to speak? What's God telling me to speak into the situation? Because God can highlight a promise that he has for us. God can highlight uh, his plan for the situation. And he can just say, speak into your heart and whisper and encourage us, now speak life speak life 
You know, God calls things which are not as though they were. So things that are not, God actually, that's the way he operates. He calls them forth. And he tells us that we can do that. He says we be imitators of God as dear children. So listen, we're in a warfare. Anyone know that? (laughs) If you're a Christian long enough, you'll realize there is a battle. And in my 32 years as a Christian, the battle hasn't got any less. It's actually more intensified. You know, and one of the weapons we use is what we say out of our mouth. That is, uh, I'm laughing at all the fans gone. <laughs> you think we were in Africa? <laughs> um, so, you know, in the whole armor of God, we take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So we can fill our hearts with God's Word, and we can put our put God's hearts. Put God's word in our heart in abundance. And then when we're faced with circumstances, whether it's in our own life, whether it's personal things, whether it's internal or external, that word will be ready. Will be ready. Do you remember Jesus uh, when he went into the wilderness? And he was, he was in the wilderness 40 days. And then he was tempted by the devil. Three times he spoke the word to the devil. The enemy came and said, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And he said, it is written. written. He spoke out the word of God. So the word was in his heart in abundance. And he, you know, the second time then, and the third time, you know, he tempted him that all the glory of this world I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus spoke the word. Mm -hmm. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. And, um... You know, you took him up into the pinnacle of the temple and, and uh, or into a very high mountain and throw yourself off. It is written, he'll give his angels charge over you. And the third time Jesus used the word against the devil. He said, it is written. Now the word was there in Jesus' heart in abundance. It was there. And what about us when we come and we're attacked by the devil? What comes out of our mouth? What comes out of your mouth when pressures come? And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So really, whatever is in your heart in abundance, it will actually... <laughs> I love... She, she, she just... She, she was looking at my notes. <laughs> she just preaches. <laughs> come, on. come on, then. You finish up. <laughs> she could, actually. <laughs> I was telling my son during the week because we were 30 years married and he was kind of he was out he, was, he doesn't live at home but he was um, yeah 30 years married and he was kind of going wow you know kind of it's amazing how you're you know you're still you're still together and well I wasn't them words but you know what I mean he, he was just going wow and I was, I was telling him the secret anyway I was saying you know in the natural Patience and I are chalk and cheese. I said everything. We don't like we don't like the same movies. We don't like the same food. We actually don't like going on to the same place on holidays. So in the natural, even when we go on holidays, patience wants to do one thing, I'm gonna do something else. So we're not kind of we compatible. We just have so many things in the natural. But I said to Sam, I said, but what we do have is so when we get into things of the spirit, we're just like a hand in a glove. We just pray together. And that's what's, that's what's kept us. When we pray together, we're on the same page. When we talk about church, when we talk about God, when we talk about our future, when we talk about our values and what we want to give our lives to, we're just so together. And then, you know, we work out the natural. We have fights about movies. Now, I go to the movies and I'm just on my phone. She's loving this big sci-fi movie and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the RT News. I'm looking at the weather forecast and I'm thinking about church. <laughs> but, but anyway, but, but that's, but in, we're together. How did, I, how did I go down there? I don't know. But um, <laughs> there's power in our words. <laughs> there's power in the spoken word. So listen, I encourage you, fill your heart with the word of God. Be in preparation. 
There will be warfares. There will be battles you face. They will come from within, internally, and they will come from without struggles. Uh, you know, we're going to have, while we're on the earth, we're going to have pressures and we're going to have attacks of the enemy. We're going to have people come against us. We're going to have to learn to forgive. We're going to have to learn to take the fiery darts of the wicked and quench them with the, sword, with the shield of faith. So there's, there's a very real battle in the heavenly realms. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, you know, but we do wrestle against principalities and powers. So there is a battle. And one of the weapons in our, uh, that God has given us is the power of our words. That we would reach a place that our words, in a sense, you know, we're, we're ready. Our heart is filled with the promises of God. And then when the attack comes or whatever comes, we know what to say. I heard the preacher saying, you know, you know, if you, do you remember the program Roadrunner? If you're watching Roadrunner all the time and then the attack comes, all that's going to come out of your mouth is beep, beep. <laughs> you know, because whatever you put in abundance will come out. So we need to have our heart filled with God's promises and God's word and God's blessings and, you know, knowing who you are in God and in the practice of even confessing who you are in Christ, be in the practice of just confessing I'm loved by God. I mean, those three things I confess all the time. I loved, I'm accepted, and I'm forgiven. You know, he has bestowed his love upon me. In him I have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And Ephesians 1, 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, whereby he has made me accepted in the beloved. Those three things I'm all the time. I'm not trying to make it happen. But what I do is I get established more and more in it when I confess it out. When, I, when you confess out that over yourself, it pushes back to negativity. It pushes back to, I mean, depression. I don't know about you, but depression comes at all of us. You know, just with the life we're in, the pressures of life and all that. And we can push it back by what we speak out of our mouths. But you've got to put those promises in your heart. Because if they're not there, when, when the circumstance comes and the pressure comes, it won't be there for you to come out. I used to drive a furniture lorry one time. Uh, and I was opening up the back of it out at the warehouse in Freshford. And it, the kind of lock on the back of it was broke. And when you pressed up the lever, it'd have a habit of springing out. The spring was broke, you know. So I was standing there one day, and I just wasn't, I was doing it fast, and I pushed it up, and it came back, and it cracked my nose. Right there. I felt, oh, right, right in the middle. I even heard the crack. Bang! And I'd been filling my heart with the Word of God. I'd been filling my heart with scriptures. And, it was, I was, and all that came out of my mouth, and this is the truth, by his stripes I'm healed. Even though I was in pain, I could feel it. And the thing just healed. Wow. Honestly. And I was even amazed. I go, what? You know, you're expected to, you're touching it and you're expecting it to, and completely healed. See, the word was there in abundance. And I was ready. And then when, it, when the attack <laughs> of the lorry came or whatever it is. But you know, you're ready. You can speak the word. Because there's power released when we speak God's word. We see it through the scriptures. Power is released. We have been given the spirit of power. Yes. Love and the sound mind. So we have the power. We have, I mean, why did God give us the spirit of love? Why did he give us the spirit of a sound mind? Why did he give us the spirit of power? It's for a reason that we can actually release it. God has given us authority in Christ Jesus. And he wants us to grow up and start releasing that authority. He's given us authority. I got an email during the week. I didn't even read the email, but the headline was, who is the boss of your life? And, I, and automatically we, we would go, God, wouldn't we? I just read the start of the email and it was saying, we are. We are. That God has given us authority. Do you remember I said, you know, when God created all the animals, he brought them to Adam to see what Adam would call them. So God brought all the animals to Adam and he stood back and he just said, what's Adam going to call them? So he gave Adam authority. If that was us, what would we do? You'd have the big, Lord, what do you want to call this one? Lord, what do you want to? And we can get kind of, we can get a false humility like that. 
and we can kind of get a religiousness about us. There's Weetabix and cornflakes. Lord, what would you like me to eat today? <laughs> it can be extreme as that. Yeah. I remember when I was living in Amsterdam as a Christian, I was a bit like that. I was living in a tent. I was born again, saved, spirit-filled. And I was trying to be led by God. And I was a young believer, but I would walk around the street saying, God, do you want me to go left or right up here? <laughs> and I'd be walking left. And I was, I was trying to be led by the Spirit. But sometimes you can get super spiritual. But I've learned over the years that God wants us to grow up as his children. And he gives us authority. And he comes and he sees, what are you doing with the authority I've given you? Are you releasing it into the circumstance? And we'd say, God, you know, I have this problem. You see all the bills, Lord. They're piling up. They're there. What am I going to do? God's already seen them. He saw them before you saw them. He saw them coming in the post. But he'd come and he'd say, what are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Because he's given us authority in Christ Jesus. He's given us the ability to actually make change in circumstances. He's given us the ability to speak the word of God. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. Life, where we can make positive changes. But you know, destruction is also in our tongue. We heard that saying, sticks and stones will break me bones, but words will never harm. That's not true. That's not true. That's a lie. I mean, I, was, I, was, I lived in Shepherd's Bush one time, and I come home from work of a Friday night, and we were getting ready to buy in the house. Guys from Kenny were getting ready to go to the pub. And one of the older guys come in, and he spoke real negative words over me. He said, um, Gilfile, you're a waster. You'll never achieve anything in life. And, then, and another couple of negative things. And they went right into my heart. I mean, he wasn't saved, I wasn't saved. But the power of negative words. So all the boy, I said, no, I'm not going to the pub. Actually, suicide came in on the back of those words. And that night I decided I'm ending my life. Honestly. Because the power of negativity and the... Whatever was carried in those words were of the devil, yeah. demonic. And it just pushed me down. And um, I remember getting into the bat when the guys were gone and all the thoughts of just slitting your wrists. And, um, you know, how destruction can be in our words. And I'm alive today. And I'm not glorying, but that guy is not alive. He's passed on. But, um, but you know, we can really be shaped... And we usually are shaped by the words that were spoken over us. Yes. You know, and thank God in Christ we can break those negative words. Amen. We can say, no, I'm not receiving Amen. any negative Amen. words spoken yes. over us. Jesus. What does Isaiah say? No weapon formed against us will prosper. Yes. And every tongue, words that rise against us in judgment, who condemns him? We do. We do. Yes. You shall condemn him. Because this is your heritage. We're servants of the Lord and our righteousness is of God. So when words are spoken over us, they can really shape us. So we've got to be kind of alert and break them. And encourage the young mums and dads, speak positive words over your children. Always. Never say to your child, you're stupid. Why did you do that? You're a fool. Why did you do that? Now, they might have done something that's foolish or they might have done something that's stupid. You can reword it. You can say, listen, you are... I mean, we used to do this with ours. And um, we have only our girls here, so I won't pick on them. <laughs> but, you know, we say, Rebecca, you are a fantastic, beautiful girl. Why did you do that? That's a stupid, that's a stupid thing that you've done. So you can reword it. It might be stupid. So you don't say you're stupid. You say... Listen, you are a child of God and you're a blessing. And, you know, God's called you. But what you done there was stupid. But a lot of our parents, what they done to us was they called us stupid, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're a dunce. I don't know, but I never got on in school anyway. I was told many times in school that I was a non-achiever. Yeah. And I was. It came to pass. Yeah. You know, so don't speak negative words of yourself. Don't speak negative words over your children, over the government, over your leaders, over your spouse. Speak life. Speak the word of God. Find the promises of God and begin to just speak them over them. Because, you know, we can shape 
circumstances around us with the words that we speak. We can shape, we can have a, you know, a part to play in the destiny that God has called us to. And we just learn to speak out the word of God. Fill our hearts with God's word. Start by just practicing over yourself who you are in Christ. Learn to do that habitually. As I was telling you, I used to write them down and I still have um, <coughs> statements and I still have things at home that I can just read out. You know, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm forgiven for all my trespasses. I'm loved by God, etc., etc. And just begin to confess that over yourselves. It brings a real dynamic back into your Christian walk. And uh, rather than just kind of, you know, floating through life and saying whatever will be, will be. Someone said that the most dangerous doctrine in the body of Christ is that God is in control of everything. Because if, if he was, when would you rebuke the devil? When would you challenge any circumstance coming your way? When would you oppose um, negative things that are coming your way? If you're saying, well, it's, it, must be of the de- it must be of God. Everything that comes, must, sure, that, that's of God. And so we need to rise up. And the scripture says to resist the enemy steadfast in our faith. Yes. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by our brotherhood in the world. Amen. So we need to guard our heart from all kinds of negative stuff that goes in. Proverbs says that guard your heart. With all diligence. So guard what goes in. Because out of your heart flow the issues of life. Protect what goes in. And then be ready to speak life. Amen. Be ready to speak life into circumstances. Be ready to speak out the word of God. We can make a change. With the power of our words. And uh, you know the tongue is, is an amazing member. It's probably the most important member in our body. And it needs refining, and it needs maturity, and uh, it needs, you know, we need to guard what comes out of our mouth. Don't speak negativity. (laughs) They say two-thirds of the brain gravitates towards negativity. That's what scientists will tell you. So we have to be fighting that all the time and pulling ourselves back. You tempted to be negative about the government? No, speak life over them. Tempted to be negative about Andy, the, the pastor. <laughs> Not going to defend myself, but I know there's a lot of that goes on. <laughs> but you know, don't, for your own sake, speak life. Amen. Speak life over people. You don't have to agree with everything everybody does, but you know, you can find something good and you can start to speak life and speak the word of God. Amen. So I just thought I'd recap on some of that. We spoke over two weeks. Sometimes we need to hear something over and over and over again. Rather than just hearing a little message and you move on to something else. We need to practice this. You need to be practicing speaking the word. So when you meet that circumstance in your life, you're going to have a scripture to speak out. When something happens to your children or you know, an attack comes, you're going to have a word. That, that you're going to speak out and you can make a change. Yeah. I mean, I told you about finding that woman in the sea in Margate. I've been confessing the word over myself just for, for, de- for a few days, praying and fasting. And I found this dead woman in the sea in Margate. Long story, I won't I'll go into it. And I just pulled her in out of the water. She was 80 something years old. And I just started speaking life. I said, You will live and not die. Oh, yeah. And you probably asked me, did, did lightning come from the sky? And, <laughs> Nothing, nothing spectacular. She just opened her mouth. And I got the ambulance. She went to the hospital. They said she had about 10 pints of water inside her. They said, this, this is a miracle. I went to see her the next day in hospital. She was sitting up in bed. Rose was her name. And the nurse brought me in. This is the young man who saved you. And I was super spiritual. I said, no, Jesus saved you. And, <laughs> and do you know what she said? She said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And she was... Um, the nurses were amazing. They, our, they couldn't believe that it was a miracle. But I just spoke the word. Wow. I pleaded the blood of Jesus over her, and I said, you'll live and not die. Hallelujah. So there is power in our words. And we have to kind of discipline ourselves to get to the place where we're, we're in this as a practice. 
We're practicing it daily over ourselves, over our children, over circumstances that we perceive as not of, you know, don't worry about if you go overboard on it. <laughs> Sometimes you got to, the pendulum has got to swing, you know, until you find a balance. Eventually you'll find a balance, but speak out the word of God. Speak life. Amen. Speak life. Speak life into your future. You can shape your future by speaking the word of God into it. Because God, you know what God's word says about your future. That he is a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a future and a hope. Amen. So I encourage us. Fill your heart with God's word. Let God's word be in your heart in abundance. And then begin to speak it out. And that means you've got to take time. You've got to take time reading the word of God. You've got to take time filling your heart with God's word. You know, evil company corrupts good habits. So if you're just in the company of circumstances, situations that's pulling you down and pulling you into a place of negativity, you know, you're not going to be ready. We have to be ready. I was meditating on this during the week. I'll just read it after Amanda's word last week about the Holy Spirit being in us and we, us being the temple. Um, for you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. God is in us. Amen. Therefore, in other words, because of this, Come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Touch, do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So because God has given us the promise, I will dwell in them and walk among them. Therefore, come out from among them. We don't hear much of that preaching, do we? Come out from among them. Be separated. And one of the reasons is so we can be ready. You know, when I got saved in London first, my pastor was very strict. I mean, if anyone came in with an earring, get that earring out of your ear. If they came in with long hair, get your hair cut. Absolutely, don't bring drink. Don't mention drink or you were... <laughs> so I'd be very strict. And a lot of the church was. It was kind of on the tail end, I think, in the, ninth, in the early 90s of a whole, the holiness movement. You know, there was a movement. And I remember one day there was a rebellion in the church. One of the leaders brought, all, brought a group of guys up to the Manhattan, a pub, and they were having a drink. Of course, that was like, that was mad for, to, to our pastor. Like, Rah! But then I see the pendulum swinging about 10 years later. The pendulum swinging to say, listen, we need to be, we need to relate to the world. You know, we need to show people that we're normal and we need to, you know, we need to go and do what they do. We need to go to the pubs and we need to kind of dress like the world. And at the expense of that, then what happens? We get influenced negatively and suddenly you're going to the pub, but you're not just going to relate to them. You're actually going to have three, four, five, six and you're singing the same songs, you know, remember them songs, Pa? I walk by the dock side one. <laughs> Mick Hillen remembers them. Down the, Mick is from Kilkenny, he's a pastor up at Norrie, and he's hanging around with Mick growing up a little bit. So. But, so the pendulum swings from one side where it's extreme to the other where we're just in the, in the name of, listen, we need to be relational and we enter into carnality. In the name of, no, we need to relate to the world. Um, and we go there and they can't see any difference with us. Yeah. Yeah. But we need to pull it back yeah. and do what the scripture says here. It says, be separated. Wow. There's a time just to be separated. And I believe one of the reasons is so we can be ready. We can be, you know, as you know, those who are engaged in warfare do not entangle themselves with the affairs of this life. Yeah. We don't get entangled with it. We don't get entangled with fair city. Or Love Island, or whatever you watch. You know, don't feed yourself on all that. Feed yourself on the Word of God. Amen. And you'll be ready. You'll be a soldier ready to quench those fiery darts, ready to fight the battles that will come your way. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. And... Amen. Praise God. Praise God. 
Let's just begin to declare out of our mouth who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Say with me today. I thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord that, I am loved by you, that I am loved by you, that you have bestowed your love upon me. I thank you, Lord, I have redemption in you, the forgiveness of sins. I thank you, Lord, that I'm accepted, thank you, Lord, I'm accepted by, you by you and in your church, and in, your church. in your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, uh, who I am in you. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And I declare today that God is dwelling in me. And he's walking among me. So I will be separated. From the ways and the affairs of this world. And I guard my heart. With all diligence. For what goes in. And I ask you today Lord. To help me to fill my heart. With your word. With your promises. So I'll be ready. To speak life. To speak your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.